Number four, which of the following atoms would be expected to form negative ions in binary ionic compounds and which would be expected to form positive ions? And then they gave us the atoms. So we have Br, Ca, Na, N, F, Al, Sn, S, and Cd. All right, so we did a very similar problem like this in last question. So this one will be a much simplified version. If you want to know the whole in-depth explanation, go back to that um, question. This one is just kind of going to be an, a brief overview. Now, in order to find out whether atoms are going to be negative ions, which is anions, negative ions, anions, those are the same thing. They will be negative charges. And that means that they actually gain electrons. Remember, negative in chemistry world actually means that you gained electrons because electrons are negative. Positive ions, the words for that is a cation. So you will have a plus charge, and that means that you lost electrons. Now, generally speaking, anions who gain electrons are technically nonmetals. So if you can spot out a nonmetal, it's going to be an anion. There are exceptions, though, but generally, if you're gaining electrons, it is a nonmetal, and then vice versa. If you're a cation, if you lose electrons, these are metals. And remember, your metalloids have both metal and nonmetal properties, so sometimes they can gain, sometimes they can lose. Okie dokie. Now we need to know the oxidation trend. This is where I went into depth about why these numbers are the way that they are in the last question, question number three. So if you want to understand more about that, go back to number three. If you're on the playlist, you got just got to hit the back button. For now, I'm just going to give you the numbers. So your oxidation state trend, and I'll put that here. I'll say oxidation state because that's what they are. The charges are called oxidation state trends. Group one is a plus one, group two is a plus two, and then you head on over to this side. Group three is a plus three, group four, sorry, group 13 is a plus three, group 14 is a plus four, and then you kind of travel backwards. So this would now be a negative three, negative two, negative one, and zero. And actually, depending on if you're a metal or a non-metal, this could either be plus four or it could also be a minus four, all right? So that just means that if I'm talking about plus two, all of the elements in group two, when they form ionic compounds and specifically binary ionic compounds, it will be a plus two charge. Those atoms will be a plus two charge. They'll be cations. Binary just means that you're basically taking two atoms together and making a compound out of them, all right? So bi in chemistry world means two. Okay, so let's get to it. The first one is bromine, Br. Bromine is over here. It's in the negative one category, and it's a nonmetal. So this would form a negative ion, and more specifically, it would be a negative one charge. And if you did have to write this when you formed a compound... It would be a Br minus 1. These charges will always go in the top right corner. And remember, negative 1 means that bromine had to gain 1 electron. So that's that. Next is calcium, Ca. Calcium is over here. Calcium is in group 2, so it's a plus 2. So this one would be a positive ion. More specifically, is a plus 2. And if you wanted to write it for, you know, practice... You would always put it in the top right-hand corner, so it'd be like that. Sodium. Sodium is also a metal, right? It's actually in group one, so it's a plus one. So this would be a positive ion. It would be a cation. More specifically, it would have a plus one charge. And if you wanted to write it, it would be Na plus one. Or you can just write, you know, a plus. That is, assumes that it is one, but I'm just going to leave the one here. Nitrogen, N. Nitrogen is a nonmetal. It's right over here, and it's in the group that has a negative 3. So this would be a anion. It would be a negative ion. More specifically, it would have a negative 3 charge. And for practice, 
it would be like that. Or, you know, you could always put the negative three. It doesn't matter if the three is in the front or the back. I just have a habit of putting the number first sometimes, but sometimes I switch it up. So they mean exactly the same thing. Next is fluorine. Fluorine is also a halogen, right? It's in group 17. It has a charge of negative one. It's a nonmetal. So this would be a negative ion, more specifically a negative one. And it would just be F minus, or you could put F minus one. Next is aluminum. Aluminum is here. It's in group 13, AKA that plus three group. So aluminum would be a positive ion. And it makes sense because aluminum is a metal. Metals usually are cations, right? They're usually pluses. So more specifically, it would be a plus three. And for practice, you could put AL with a three plus charge. SN, I think I have room on the bottom here. SN, SN is over here, number 50, that's tin. Now this one, hmm, right? This is a plus and a minus four. Which one is it? Now we have to go back to what we stated before in terms of what metals usually are and what non-metals are usually. Tin, SN, is a metal, right? It's literally in the yellow category, yellow is metals. So what do we know? Metals are usually cations, they're usually plus charges. So tin would be a plus ion. More specifically, it would follow the plus four, so SN plus four. Now tin, I believe, has a lot of different charges, so this is just giving you an example based on the trend, but it would definitely be a positive ion. Moving on, we got sulfur. I could put that over here. Sulfur is number 16. It's in the oxygen group, the calcogen group. It's a negative two, so that means that it's a negative ion. It's an anion. It's a nonmetal, um, more specifically negative two, and you would just write it like that if you wanted practice. And then last but not least, CD, cadmium. Cadmium is right here. Now, Transition metals do not have a trend for oxidation states. They transition from one state to another. However, cadmium is a metal. So what do we know about metals? Metals generally will always lose electrons. They will be positive. So in this case, I can just say that it's a positive ion, but I don't really know what actual number it would be. Maybe it could be a plus one. Maybe it could be a plus two or a plus three. So transition metals are going to have many different oxidation states. But that's the end for this one. What do you guys think? So by this one, you just got to know that oxidation state trend from your main group elements and just know that transition metals don't have a trend like that. They have many different oxidation states. This will help you out when we start naming compounds and learning how to put them together, which is always fun. Um, Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thank you for coming here for your answers. Hopefully, you know, I'm making it easy for you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. Hit that subscribe button if this helped you out. Um, yeah, thanks so much. I'll see you guys in the next question. Bye-bye.